a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you. Not the things that hide you, not your toys. They're just beside you. But it's you. I like every part of you. Your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue. That it's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, "Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor?" It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair. But it's you I like. The way you are right now. The way down deep inside you. Not the things that hide you. Not your toys. 
they're just beside you. But it's you I like. Every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like, it's you yourself, it's you. Welcome. Welcome to the One Region All Neighbors Awards Ceremony. Please give a round of applause to our host, the Interim Executive Director of WSIU Public Broadcasting, Jack Tishner. Hi, everybody. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We're so happy you're here. The pandemic, of course, has left us with one of the most challenging times in our country's history. At WSIU, we waited and we waited and we waited until we could get together this afternoon and celebrate the good neighbors in this room. Here we are. It feels great to be assembled together. Our team at WSIU has worked very hard at a distance throughout the past 18 months to help you stay connected with the world around you. Our mission is clear. WSIU exists to improve the quality of life in the region and the people that we serve. Through program services and outreach, WSIU partners with community organizations to promote positive change and to support the academic and public service missions of Southern Illinois University Carbondale. We believe that the One Region All Neighbors campaign, a project that represents uh, and recognizes individuals, youth, educators, businesses, and community groups that promote our positive change throughout our region is a perfect fit for our mission. We wanna take a moment here to thank the sponsors whose dedication to their communities helped make today's event possible. They include Southern Illinois Healthcare, First Southern Bank, Joseph Hudgens Orthodontics, AES Solar, and CASCOM. We also want to thank the many staff, students, and others with uh, WSIU and our friends group who brought their expertise, energy, and passion to support today's event. Please stand and be recognized as your name is called. In marketing and digital services, Katrina Stackhouse, Pearl Franz, and J.C. Dart. In television production, Abby Asher, Benji Jeffords, Daryl Moses, and Mark St. George. We have some student employees who are also helping us today, Katya Saldana and Nicole Tilburg. And from our radio station, our associate director for radio, Jeff Williams. And recognizing dignitaries in the uh, audience, special thanks to Carbondale City Councilman Carolyn Harvey for attending today. Good to see you here. <laughs> to talk about today's awards and the background, I'd like to introduce uh, someone who has been at the heart of this since the very inception of the One Region All Neighbors uh, campaign, Beth Spasia, who is our WSIU field representative for education and community outreach. Beth? Thank you, Jack, and it's great to see everyone here today. About three years ago, I saw a short video from Independent Lens that inspired me to think about the work I do at WSIU in a new way. This is that video. It's called, We Are All Neighbors. We will, we will, we will uplift each other. We will work hard together. We will protect each other. We will 
challenge one another. We will inspire each other. We are all neighbors. See our unique stories on Independent Lens. Truly, public media has the power to inspire. As a result of seeing this video, WSIU organizes our resources to coordinate a multi-platform campaign on the theme of neighbor. We're all here today as a result of that station-wide effort to recognize what it means to be neighborly. Our public media hero for One Region All Neighbors, Fred Rogers, was known for his creativity, kindness, spirituality, and commitment to the well-being of children. Lovingly called America's favorite neighbor, Fred Rogers used his many diverse talents to inspire, nurture, and educate. WSIU's campaign recognizes that neighborliness is an important aspect of community involvement and public service. Over the past year, people from across this region called and went online to WSIU.org to nominate people in their communities who were examples of what it is to be a neighbor. And today, we recognize these people in five categories. They are individuals, youth, educators, business, and community groups. So this afternoon, we will recognize and present medallions, just like the Olympics, um, to the winners who are present with us today, and we'll also be taking photographs. And we want to take this time to thank members of the committee who reviewed all the nominations and selected the winners. Committee members who are here, please stand and be recognized. Missy Brown of Marion, Susan Hake of Springfield, Mark McDonald of Springfield, Ron Naverson of Macanda, and Jack. Thank you, Jack. And we also want to thank all of you who took the time to make a nomination. And I know there are several of the nominators in the group today, so thank you all. Okay, so here's the order for our ceremony this afternoon. For each of the categories of winners, we will watch a short video, and we will then ask the winners from each of the categories to come up on stage. You'll be coming up onto this side of the stage, please, and you will be receiving your medals from Susan Tullis and Robin Haller from our WSIU Friends Board. And then um, we can begin now. Here's Jack to distribute the awards. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Beth. I'd like to also uh, thank our Friends Board members from WSIU who are here, Susan Tulis, Andrea Brown, Candace Isburner, Ron Naverson, and Robin Howler, uh, as well as uh, uh, many of our friends here at the uh, event today. We will watch a video to begin this uh, in just a moment. Our first category, our first video is for individuals. So let's roll it, thank you. I'm a counselor and advocate at the Women's Center. I've been there for almost uh, 10 years now. Um, I was first hired to work in the black community because traditionally African-Americans do not report or request services. Um, it took me almost eight of those years to actually get that going. But now people will call me on my cell phone. They don't necessarily call the Women's Center, but they'll call me and uh, I have a friend, can you help them? 
Um, that wasn't happening at first. When I first set, my office was originally at the Irma Hayes Center, which is still there. Uh, we're hoping that the center gets back open. But I would sit there every week and I put up my little flyer for counseling and nobody came. And uh, I got, I had a team of interns working with me. And so we tried to discuss ways we thought we could get people in here and to come into the center at least. And we came up with doing a women's empowerment group. So I kind of call it like the ice cream effect. Like when you're a kid and you don't want to take the medicine, your mother crush it up and put it in the ice cream and stir it up. The women's empowerment group is the ice cream and getting people to uh, tell or request for help is the medicine. Right now, I'm a rape crisis advocate and counselor for the Women's Center. I'm a criminal justice chair for NAACP. I'm the director of Carbondale United. I'm a founding member of Soul Ill Unity Coalition. And I sit on the board of the African American Museum, Connect 360, and uh, Illinois Cares. Uh, around 12 years old, I got um, involved in doing community things. Um, of course, we didn't have marching and stuff uh, quite back then, but um, just like uh, I got people together to apply for jobs. Uh, they used to have the youth program, and uh, I had a dance group where we performed at uh, block parties in the community. Uh, my children, uh, especially I have three sons. And also, I would say it's kind of in my blood. So my mom and Coretta King Scott are first cousins. I've always been involved in the community, even when I was way younger. And so was my mother. Before COVID, we had almost 40 clients uh, coming to the Women's Center for services from the African-American community. The social justice activism is actually at the Women's Center, even though we mainly deal with domestic violence and sexual assault, we also have social justice is one of our areas. And so the Women's Center has been very graciously allowing me to march, to work with black entrepreneurs, to, um, we have a Black Tuesday group. And until the weather got bad, we were meeting outside and people got, people who don't have a brick and mortar building can come out and uh, show their, uh, products or services uh, to people in the community. Uh, so those are uh, some of the other things that we're doing um, at the Women's Center. We just got the Healing Grant Illinois, which will help us uh, do more. Of course, COVID is a culprit and it's uh, interfering, but we won't let that stop us. Uh, we're going virtual with everything. It should not be an issue or feel ashamed or it's okay to ask for help, uh, whether it be domestic violence or rape crisis or social justice or just because you don't have pampers for your child or you don't know where to get food or um, you're about to get evicted. Uh, it's okay to reach out to help and uh, we mostly help with those types of issues. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood when you have help, when you have services, when you have someone right there in the community that you can call and they come out and help. I think that's being like a good neighbor and that will signify, I guess, winning the award if you're that person that's trying to help the community. The winners of the individual award are Nancy Maxwell of Carbondale, Stan Newman of Mount Vernon, and Jason Powell of Marion. Please come up and accept your award on behalf of uh, WSIU.
How about a big round of applause for our winners? I also want to mention a couple of members of the WSIU Friends Board who are also assisting us today, uh, Mark Watson and Mike Ruiz. They're doing a terrific job for us. Our second category today is youth, and this is especially special and neighborly for us. Let's roll the video for youth, okay? Well, uh, we were driving down the road. We were going to a restaurant. This was before COVID. We were going to a, a restaurant, and there was this big, there was like two or three cans on the road. And I said, that's not okay. Back up, Kiki, which is my grandma. And she said, why? And I said, there's a can back there. And I don't think that that's good for the environment. So they went back and we got the can and we put it in the floorboard. And we kept driving and there were some more and we just started collecting them. And whenever we had enough, we would take them to the recycling plant, get money. And they said, you can do whatever you want with the money that you make from doing this. And I said, well, if I can help the environment, I can also help other people with the money I make from the environment. I've raised $375. I've donated the money to the Cambria uh, Toy Drive, Toys for Tots, uh, the uh, Veterans Honor Flight in Illinois, and um, the Wounded Warrior and the homeless pets. The next charity I'm going to donate to is Consider the Homeless. Uh, the one after that is going to be, I'm going to team up with one of my grandparents' friends, and we're going to do a food drive. Well, I learned to do good things for others whenever I was playing a baseball game. I do baseball. I was playing a baseball game with a buddy and somebody hit the I hit the ball and it hit him directly into the gut at high speeds so instead of running to to uh, the first plate I went and helped him up and that's where I figured out that people need to help each other to live on this planet together hi my name is Dragon Bandy and I have won WSIU's Mr. Rogers Neighborly Award Well, I want to start drawing pictures because the, I realized that the food pantry was low on food and like my grandma, great grandma Luanda Faker, she did a lot of fundraisers and volunteered a lot and I wanted to look up to her and be just like her when I grow up. And then also if I raised a lot of money for the Murfreesboro Food Pantry, I would also think, like I would probably think that if not only they could get a lot of get a lot of food, but have some masks to keep everybody safe and healthy that are really poor and homeless. I raised seventeen hundred dollars and a little more, and. Honestly, I really don't know how many pictures I've made for people. It's probably around 250. Yeah, so my original goal was to hit $200, but then after we hit $200, our next goal was $800, but we even got more than that, so on every drawing that I drew or created, I put a quote from Helen Keller that said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And that's a very true quote or phrase because when you do something alone or just by yourself, you really can't do that much to it. But if you do it together with everybody, with everybody, you can make a big difference or a change to the world. She's always been very aware of those in need. Like when we were, when she was probably about four, maybe even three or four, at our church that we had, we were going to, there was an angel tree there. So we pulled a couple names off of there and I took her with me to go shopping for the gifts on the angel tree. And I was trying to explain to her. So 
I had to basically make up a story in order for her to understand that this is for a little girl named Sarah and she, her family doesn't have enough money to buy her toys this Christmas. So we are gonna help by buying these toys for her parents or for her family and give them to her. And I will never forget the look on her face. She just sat there and she was taking it all in and she started to cry thinking about this little girl who we, I purposefully chose a age and a gender the same as her because I wanted her to be able to understand and the look on her face, like she really, she was taking it all in and she started to cry for this little girl who didn't have presents that Christmas. So I think it was a mixture of sadness for this girl, but then probably also I think she felt good that she could provide, help provide for these kids on the angel tree. And um, so she's always kind of had that caring heart that I think even at this age, most kids, you know, don't necessarily have that. And she's had that ever since she was little, very um, empathetic towards others. And if she sees people over by McDonald's, she's always wants to stop and mom, what can we give them? Can we go back there and get some, get them some food? And so I don't know, she was just kind of born with this very caring heart and wanting to help others and take care of others. So we're very proud. My name is Lila Figger hey. and I won the WSIU Neighborly Award. I think, I think we have a couple of aspiring young broadcasters in the audience. They did a terrific job in their interviews. The winners of the Youth Award are Dragon Bandy of Carbondale and Violet Fager of Carbondale. Please come, come on up to the stage and receive your award. <laughs> Wonderful job, wonderful job. Our next category is education and educators. Let's roll the video. Retiring kindergarten teacher, Andrea Mooneyham at Tri-C Elementary in Carterville School District goes above and beyond to be a helper throughout her teaching career, but especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Within days of mandatory school closing, she volunteered to prepare meals and lesson packets for students. She personally helped distribute them throughout neighborhoods with the school bus. WSIU honors Mrs. Mooneyham with the Neighborly Award for Education, inspired by Fred Rogers for a lasting community legacy. Friend and fellow teacher Kelly Webb defines a good neighbor as someone who makes others better in their presence. Thanks to Mrs. Webb for nominating this good neighbor. And congratulations to Andrea Mooneyham. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Ming Ching Xiao. Uh, I'm a faculty member in the Department of Mathematics at SIU. And I originally from China. And I got my PhD in 1997 in, from U of I. After I, I spent uh, two more years as a postdoc in University of California, Davis, and before I moved to Carbondale. I have three kids and we live in McKenda. And I enjoy doing math with kids. That's probably the reason I come here to, I would be happy to tell you more about the story about we have. And we do have a lot of very intelligent, smart kids in, in Southern Illinois. Right. Uh, for the K to 12, young kids. So like some from the, we're running the class from uh, kindergarten to uh, 12. So we divided the kids in a couple of groups and try, try to help them to inspire them their interest in learning mathematics. Called, called the Saturday Math Enhancement Class. I remember uh, many years ago, 
I brought my kids to Su Zhenbang Dance Studio for, for dancing uh, class there. And I met a lady there, so we have a conversation, talk about the math in, in elementary school, in the high school. And he told me that he actually brought his son to St. Louis every weekend for the, for, uh, to attend the, the Kuma math for the extra tutoring, so to help his son develop the, the, the mathematics capacity. And, and this surprised me because I think, wow, this is a very uh, big commitment because every weekend she had to brought her son into St. Louis. Why locally can we provide our local uh, kids this kind of platform so that they don't need to travel so far away, it, we, so they're more effective in their learning? So this, uh, many years ago, it, uh, made me think about that what we can do for the local kids and for our local uh, student, in particular the young kids student. Studies show that uh, young children develop an extensive daily mathematics and are capable of learning more and deeper mathematics than you will really assume. So this is a very good investment for the local kids and mathematics along with the English are those are two important fundamental areas for the kids the, the international development. We started in the 2013 uh, in uh, for the for uh, starting 2013 to running this enhancement mass enhancement class for our local kids and uh, those stu so, uh, those students most students are mainly from Carbondale and Carterville, Marin, and Murfreesboro. We divided the kids in a couple groups, from kindergartner to a second grader as a one group, and, and from third grader to the fifth grader as another group, and the sixth grader to the eighth grader as, a, as the, another group, and the high school student as a one group. So we separate different classes and we teach them we are, the goal we teach them is not like the school teach the, the curriculum we like to we would like to teach them in uh, inspire their interest and so that they they love mathematics we try to in co cooperate the, the 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 learning process into with a fun enjoyable uh, uh, um, and process and so this is what we uh, try to do in that. So a lot of uh, parents actually send me e uh, uh, email. They always eager to, to say, well, wh when your classes still uh, can be uh, resumed to the face-to-face -face, uh, because they kind of can't wait. But due to this pandemic, so we have to run it into uh, uh, online and in the, in the Zoom, and, but in a small group of students right now. But you will rely a little bit uh, big group so that we, the student can interact each other and the, the instructor also can interact with the student. The Southern Illinois, certainly, I think we love Southern Illinois. I love Southern Illinois. I settled down, I lived here for 20 years. First of all, uh, Southern Illinois, it, you can see Carbondale, we don't have too much hurricanes the, uh, and those are like a severe weather, we don't have. So sometimes my colleague in the agriculture department, we, we always say that uh, Southern Illinois, Carbondale, just like uh, California in the United States. And also, for example, some good things uh, is that like the apples. Uh, and and it, we, Southern Illinois also produce apples. Uh, and and the, our apple actually in Southern Illinois pretty good quality then like a Michigan provider apples, there's more uh, antioxidants in Southern Illinois. So I love Southern Illinois, and my kids, I, I have uh, three kids, and two of them born in Carbondale, so we love here, and we would like to contribute our efforts, if possible, to promote this region with our expertise. We would like to have, uh, actually, we would like to have more kids 
to if they are interested in math, no matter they like it, math or they not really, or math is not their favorite subject, we will like the local uh, kids, more local kids that can participate in our program, uh, participate in our Saturday math class. And because we have a very uh, impressive uh, uh, progress, we can see the student making a very significant progress. The winners in the category of education are Andrea Mooneyham of uh, Carterville, Julie Wittenborn Sukowski of Ava, Sikorsky, excuse me, and Dr. Ming Zheng Zhao. Accepting the award for Dr. Zhao are several of his math camp students, Bill, Ryan, Isabella, Francis, Nathaniel, Jordan, Owen, and others. Please come up and accept the awards. another round for us. Wonderful young people. Our next category this afternoon is in the field of business. Let's watch. Hey, Jack, we don't have the business video, so please uh, proceed with announcing the winners. Okay. Having, we're having a little problem with the video for uh, business, but we will uh, now bring the uh, winners to the stage. The winners of the business award are David Mattingly, the owner of Heron Drug, and Cristados of Carbondale. Please come up. Thank you, David. Our final category today is in the area of community and nonprofits. Let's roll the video. Hi, my name is Timothy Coles, and I go by Tim here in Heron, Illinois. I've won WSIU's Neighborly Award. I've been here uh, two and a half years, yeah. This week, I prepared 1,601 meals. That's a lot of meals, but that's two meals a day for kids and adults, you know. I, I really have been glad that God used me as a instrument to reach out to others because this is a reach out uh, facility and uh, I, I found it, find it a, real, a true blessing. I, I don't mind putting in anywhere from 40 to 60 hours a week in here. Um, 
It's not the hours that make the difference. It's seeing a smile upon their face or hear them say, when I walk down the street sometimes, uh, go get something, hey, thanks for that meal, that was great. You know, it's a, it's a blessing. Well, due to the COVID-19 virus, that is really putting a damper on a lot of kids being able to travel. Um, but during the last year, we did have a lot more but we're in the beginning of the season. And it is a blessing that we get to do, uh, get to feed the kids, because normally when we got to have in the normal dining room, uh, instead of the takeout, they got to have what is called a grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And they really go for that. When I came over here to the House of Hope, uh, God said, I want you here. And since we all are together in unity here, uh, it's, a bit, it's a real true blessing. And I really have enjoyed it immensely. A couple years ago, I literally physically died. And when I came back to life, God said, I got a mission for you. Cause, uh, I thought I was, you know, a real true goner. I had a massive heart attack. And um, ever since I came back, that's all I've been doing is volunteering, doing God's work. Uh, and I, and I want to make sure that I fulfill my destiny here on earth. So when it comes time for my time to get my rewards, I'll have no trouble. You have to have loyalty first and integrity to become a good neighbor because we're all out here to help each other. One, I love to sing. Uh, God gave me a great voice. I used to belong to my choir uh, when we were in Collinsville for 22 years. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I my name is Tina Carpenter, and I'm the CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southern Illinois. So I've been with the Boys and Girls Clubs since 2009, so I've been with them for 11 years, and um, served in the role as program director when I first started, um, and then became the director of operations as we added more sites, and then um, in 2017 became the CEO. We serve um, generally about 1,500 youth a year um, as members of the Boys and Girls Club. And since COVID, um, our average daily attendance has gone from 355 kids a day to about 150 kids a day. We have approximately 40 staff um, working with our youth, and that ranges from you know, the, the, our frontline staff, our youth development professionals, are working with our youth 10 to 12 hours a day at the moment, um, helping them in the mornings with their remote learning and um, providing them lunch, breakfast, uh, providing suppers for the high schoolers because they're here later in the day. And um, so therefore, just again, providing the mentoring, being there for them, as well as um, you know, just supporting them with their emotional health right now. Um, we have social workers on staff that are there for our youth. Our board of directors has been extremely supportive through all of this, as they always are. Having to constantly be ready to make a change, to pivot, has been a challenge in that we just have to be ready to adjust, but always keeping our mission in the forefront. So our mission is to inspire and enable all young people 
especially those that need us most, to realize their full potential as caring, responsible, and productive citizens. So there are three pillars that we really use to build our programs with, and that's academic success, good character and citizenship, and healthy lifestyles. When we were informed back in March that everything was shutting down, we went to work right away to figure out how do we keep serving these families and the youth. First and foremost was feeding them. So we worked with the schools to make sure that we could become a distribution site for breakfast and lunch. And then we started contacting local restaurants to see how we could get suppers. Between March and August, we served over 22,000 meals to our community. We also provided virtual programming. We made sure we checked in with our kids, providing story time, science experiments, and when they came to pick up their meals, we provided them with activity kits so that they could do these things at home. So Abigail, who won the Youth Good Neighbor Award last year, um, and was our junior youth of the year in 2018. You know, when everything shut down and she knew that we were gonna still be serving meals and doing virtual programming, um, she made 100 masks for our staff. It was just, you know, that connection. She's, she's the person that exemplifies our mission. We worked really closely with the health department. Our board has a safety committee. We worked between April and June to get a very hearty, strong safety plan so that we could reopen for the summer. That has always had to change as well, like how many people you could have in a space. Anything from how often we're cleaning, cleaning logs, wearing masks, taking temperatures, health surveys, all added components to our everyday. Being creative, because we can't do the contact sports. Our high school boys like to come and play basketball. So we've talked with people from many different um, organizations, including getting some support from the NBA on drills, um, on how to get them to still be physically active, wearing masks, being socially distanced, you know, so I hear stories from other clubs and the struggles and how difficult it's been, especially with fundraising. The community has been so supportive of us. People see what we're doing and are proud of what we're doing, are happy. And um, I can't thank the community enough. You can learn more about the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southern Illinois by visiting our website at www.bgcsi.org. When, when Beth Spazier called me to tell me that we had won the award, I was so excited, and not just for me, but really excited for our staff. Our youth development professionals, our site directors, our program coordinators have worked tremendously hard since March. That's what I felt at that moment. I was just excited to be able to, I couldn't wait to go tell them. Um, we can't do what we do without them. They are the backbone of the organization. They really are because our programs are only as good as our staff and they are amazing. The mission here at the Carbondale Warming Center when we initially opened was to provide a warm, safe place to, for people to sleep at night with some food and some resources during the winter months. Um, we felt like that mission needed to be expanded at this time last year because the world got turned upside down, <laughs> literally, with COVID-19 and a global pandemic. And the places that they would go, that they would get food or care for their own personal hygiene using the restroom, being out of the cold or the rain during that time, those things were basically immediately overnight eliminated. 
um, due to the shelter in place, which was necessary. But what do you do when you're homeless and you have a shelter in place or a stay at home order? So at that time, our board met. Um, it was a unanimous decision that we go 24 hours for the health and safety, not just of the people here, but of our community. Um, at the time, we had over 30 people in the building, and if they're just all out 12 hours of the day, unable to wash their hands, unable to take care of the basic needs to help prevent the spread of COVID, how are we serving our community? <laughs> so when we went 24 hours, we realized we were going to be spending a lot of time with our guests. And we enacted our jobs program. We enacted our men's and women's empowerment groups and our goal orientation program. Um, we started building an interview closet from that. 60% of the people in our jobs program that have done it have obtained and still maintain employment. They begin to build our guests from the inside out. When you've gone through something like homelessness, there's a loss to that. And there's, there's emotions that go with that. And there's lack of confidence and not knowing if you can do it again. And be, rebuilding that comes from the inside. And it doesn't get rebuilt by us giving them a pillow and a cot and, and a plate of food. It gets rebuilt by having conversations and getting all the ladies together in a group and having them support each other and the men too. There's times you walk through here and it's almost the end of the men's empowerment group. And you literally hear things that you wouldn't think that you'd hear in a homeless shelter environment. You hear people laughing. You hear this enjoyment, you hear this this thirst for life again. And, and that's one of the coolest things. Or in the evening, they'll get in from work and they'll use the basketball hoop or the guys will be out here tossing a football. And those are some of the things that we're, we're really excited about because it allows them to grow, not just reaching their goals back to permanent housing, but building them up. The Warming Center connects with so many groups and agencies in this area. And that's one of the things that we're really grateful for because if there's a need that we have, there's a group that's designed for it already. Um, the list is, is enormous from the Bethel AME Church Feed My Sheep program. They stopped doing their services there as lunch, but they said, you know, what can we do right now? Well, we'll send lunch to the warming center. And they supply eight meals a week to us. Um, the Rotary, noon and evening Rotary, have been amazing for us. We've worked well with Good Samaritan, the Women's Center, Sparrow Coalition, Southern Illinois Coalition for the Homeless, Give SI, Community Resources, the city, the township, uh, the fire department, the health department, the hospital. It has been a full collective. I know the building is behind me. And if we picture the building as a package of plates here, a check there, a pack of silverware, some cups, and here's some blankets. Oh, you guys need sweatpants. And if you picture that, that's what creates the foundation of who we are. It is this entire community. By decree, we're a compassionate city. By action, we're a caring, compassionate, and concerned city for everybody within here. And if anything, we're forever grateful for the lives that they've helped us allow, allowed us to help change here. We're honored to serve not just the citizens of Carbondale and not just our guests, but the community as a whole. Many folks know I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and that is the home of Fred Rogers. And we grew up on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and the trolley and learning so many things from being able to watch him share his life and his beliefs with young children. It means the world for a girl from Pittsburgh to to win the Fred Rogers Good Neighbor Award someplace else because it means we've really fulfilled that mission. We've taken it from where it started and spreading it around all over the country. My name is Carmelita Cahill and I'm the Executive Director of the Carbondale Warming Center and I'm proud to be receiving the WSIU Mr. Rogers Neighborly Award. And the winners of the Community and Nonprofit uh, Profit Awards are Tim Colson of Culp and the Heron House of Hope, Carmelita Cahill and the Carbondale Warming Center, 
and Tina Carpenter and the Boys and Girls Club of Southern Illinois. Please come up. Wonderful stories of inspiration all the way across the board. I'd like now at this point to uh, ask Bespasia to return to the stage and explain some of the items on your table. Yes, and if you're curious about these videos, please be assured that we will make access to these videos available to each and every one of you following the ceremony. I want to say that the past 18 months or so have been a really challenging time for all of us. No question about that. And while the One Region All Neighbors campaign has reached its natural conclusion, all of us at WSIU are committed to recognizing the humanity and goodness that exists in all of us. Let's recall these words from Fred Rogers. Often, when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. I've felt that many times. My hope for all of us is that the miles we go before we sleep will be filled with all the feelings that come from deep caring, delight, sadness, joy, wisdom, and that in all the endings in our life, we will be able to see new beginnings. On our tables today are some items to take home to help you remember to extend hope and to create new beginnings for someone else. So the previews is the booklet that provides programming information for our radio and television and multi-channel services at WSIU. You can take the Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood materials home and share them with children that you know. The Southern Illinois Coalition for Children and Families has information on the tables to um, help families get the access to resources that they need. And I hear those bells. Please do not take the trolleys home with you. <laughs> These are re reserved for another purpose. All right, we invite you to tune into WSIU. Experience our digital channels. No matter what platform you prefer, whether that's radio, TV, web, tablet, or smartphone, you can discover high quality programming that fits your interests. And now, Jack is here to share exciting news about what's coming right up on the WSIU stations. Thanks very much, Beth. This summer, WSIU brings you the 2021 PBS Short Film Festival. Starts tomorrow, 
July 12th and runs for two weeks through July 23rd. You can stream 25 films that are selected for the National Festival. WSIU is very proud to be a producing partner of this National Film Festival for the fourth year in a row. We're excited to showcase the wealth of student and community talent in our region through this festival and other community engagement work we do. WSIU helps create the next generation of media professionals and helps give voice to all of our citizens. Take some time over the next couple of weeks to visit pbs.org slash film festival and vote for your favorite short films. We hope that you'll like the two locally produced films the best and vote for them as your favorites. In addition to the PBS uh, Short Film Festival, we invite you, of course, to tune in to WSI's multi-channel spaces and to watch anytime, any place, at home and on the go. As we close, we'd like to ask all of today's award recipients to come back up to the stage for a group photo and recognize you one more time for all the fantastic work you're doing in our community. That's the end of our, our event this afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you so. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine, could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please, won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? It's you I like It's not the things you wear It's not the way you do your hair But it's you I like The way you are right now The way down deep inside you Not the things that hide you Not your toys They're just beside you but it's you I like Every part of you Your skin, your eyes, your feelings Whether old or new I hope that you 